All right, today I'm going to tell you how the coral castle was built, and uh, this applies to uh, the pyramids as well. I was, I've been reluctant to put this information out there, so uh, I'm going to put it out there, but I'm going to leave out some vital information that you would need to actually redo this. But right now you're looking at uh, a piece of the equipment at the coral castle right here. And I've seen this before right now. There's a bunch of parts missing off of it because uh, they don't want people figuring out how to do that. But what this is is a big electromagnet. Um, when I saw it, you can see a crank handle here where he spins it in circles and there's a piece of pipe right here. But when I saw it, it had a bunch of uh, copper wire and stuff sticking out of it before all that was done. And it's the configuration of the magnets uh, is important here. But basically these are a bunch of V-shaped pieces of steel that he wrapped and coated wire and created magnets out of. Uh, and he's using this to create a, a large magnetic field. And like a lot of this stuff is made out of car parts and different things. So if you, you look at this piece of metal right here, it's just a flywheel off of a, an engine out of a car. And there's one on the top and the bottom. And almost all his parts or his inventions are made out of uh, car parts. Obviously there was a junkyard or something close to where he was. So this is how he, he got all his parts. So uh, basically, uh, you know, he didn't have electricity or anything there, so he, was, he would be powering this off a car battery and spinning it. Uh, so my next picture here is basically the same thing. You can see the inside of it a little bit better here. Um, this motor and stuff doesn't belong here. This is an old generator, but basically he tore parts like things like this apart, like uh, generators and stuff to get the copper wire out of it, because it's a specific type of copper wire uh, that is used to create magnets. It's a coated copper wire, so he just tore apart uh, old starters and alternators. They didn't have alternators back then, but generators and things to get his copper wire out of. And you see a bunch of pieces of metal back here, which was used for something else. And uh, I may explain that later if I don't run out of time. Uh, next picture. You see a lot of these. These are bottles wrapped with wire. And there's about 10 of these. And then you have a bigger one here, which is, is a little different. This is uh, actually a resistor. Uh, that he that he made and and these are not resistors. These are another thing I'm going to explain to you in a minute But the, these bottles with wires wrapped around it are, are everywhere And then you see some different things up here, which I'm going to explain that in a second here Here's another larger. It's not a bottle. It looks like it's a jug of some kind wires wrapped around that uh, And then again, you have another resistor here and he's he's made a small horseshoe magnet here. So uh, from what I read, it took him about 20 years to make this coral castle. Uh, so it wasn't instant, and it, and it took him a long time to do what he was going to do. Uh, and as you can see here, here's another glass bottle. And it's got a, a piece of metal on the bottom and another piece of metal here. And this piece of metal used to sit on the bottom of this. And uh, again, I'll explain that in a second. And here's a lot more of these bottles with wires wrapped around them. And you can see the ground part of it. What these bottles are, are uh, and, and they're all over the place, are, are frequency tuners. Uh, he was looking for a specific frequency, and you can see these bottles just all over the place. And, th and this is a main component of uh, how Ed did this, created a, a, a neutral magnetic field. And it has to do with radio frequencies. And all these bottles are actually a radio frequency receiver as well as these parts over here. They're radio frequency receivers. So he's using a combination of radio frequency and, mag and magnetics to uh, create his neutral magnetic field to lift up, you know, 30 ton rocks just by himself. And uh, you can actually make one of these at home. Uh, and I'll show you that here in a second. So here you see a better picture of some other frequency tuners and stuff up here. And I believe I have a close up picture and more bottles over here. Uh, so it took him a long time to find the frequency that he was looking for. And I have to go to another set of pictures here. Uh, these here are also frequency tuners. Uh, he was searching for a specific frequency, and I'm not going to reveal that information. I'm going to leave that out. But he was looking for some f very specific frequencies to go along with his magnetic field because the two work in conjunction with each other to, to, to create what he was doing there. 
And uh, you can see a close up here of an old style frequency tuner, and there's the knob. You know, and he took this out of an old style tube radio uh, to, to, to find his frequencies. And here's actually the old radio that he took those frequency tuners out of. Uh, and it took him a quite a while, I'm assuming, to do all this. And, and there's another machine here. There's a bunch of machines that they say they don't know what they are. I know exactly what all of these are. And uh, they were used to, to cut the coral. If you look at the coral, the, the coral is very crudely cut. I do know how he did that. Uh, and I do know what all these other machines are for, but it would take another video to explain all that to you. I don't have enough time in this one. I'm only allowed at about 10 minutes. So this one right here is the one that you can make at home. It's the exact same thing that Ed did. Uh, one end of the, this is just uh, coated copper wire wrapped around a, a beer bottle in this case. Uh, one end of this wire would go to an antenna and the other end of this wire would go to a ground. And uh, this is just a coat hanger that you would use. And then you sand a small area off the uh, coating of the wire and you could hook this up to a small speaker uh, in this case, I think they're using an old earbud of some kind. And raising the coat hanger up and down, you can pull in radio frequencies and listen to the different radio frequencies with absolutely no power whatsoever. It powers itself. So that's what Ed was doing. Uh, Ed used a combination of radio frequency and magnetics. And again, uh, radio frequencies are electromagnetic waves traveling through the air uh, to do that. Now, I have a little upper hand on most people and, and on this and how Ed was doing it because in the late 60s and early 70s, some, somewhere between 1968 and 1972, there was a guy working with radio waves for the military and he had a very large radio and it was like six feet tall and 10 feet long. And uh, he had it in his house and I'm assuming he was working for frequencies to try and find a better way of communicating with submarines and stuff like that. So he was working for the military and he was tuning in his radio, and there was a small wooden table uh, behind him. He had all his paperwork and everything on, and a cup of coffee. So he turned around to grab his cup of coffee. Much to his surprise, the coffee was dripping up out of the cup and to the ceiling. And they actually showed this on the news. I seen it. I seen it doing it. Uh, I don't know how many people remember that because I'm, I'm 60, so you'd really have to have a good memory to remember that. But I was very impressed with it and, and never forgot it. So the military came in there and did all kinds of tests, paid the guy for his equipment, took it back to their base, and they could not duplicate it. Well, that's because every test they did, they did them all but one test they needed the test for, and that was the magnetic field in the area. Magnetics are all over this planet, and they're not the same everywhere. So he basically stumbled over the thing, uh, and they didn't test for the magnetics in the area that way, therefore they, they couldn't duplicate it. But Ed, he created his own magnetic field, and a fairly large one at that, uh, to make his neutral magnetic field. Now these are more uh, springs off of cars. They're leaf springs. Uh, that's not really what I want to show you, though, but they're a part of these pulleys, and you'll see several pulleys. This one has a handle on it, and uh, there's pulleys all over. There's another one behind it, and they were all used to cut stone. Uh, cutting the stuff is a little different uh, than regular rock. You can see another uh, thing here with a pulley on it with a crank handle. Here's another instrument with a crank handle on it. All these were used to cut the stone, and, and I know how he did that. I have a piece of coral here. I went downstairs and tried it. Sure enough, it works. It's slow going, but it does work. So that's how he cut the stone using these crank handles and wire, basically. And then this is Ed himself here. Now, I read up on this, and uh, it said it took him about 20 years to do this, and I imagine it would have. The way that he was do cutting the stone and stuff would <laughs> definitely took him a while, but... Uh, you know, they, they said that the one revolving door there weighs about 40 tons and you can just push it open with one finger. Well, that's because the way that he created, created his field there, uh, it's not really like it's zero gravity. Things aren't just floating away. It's more of a neutral gravity field where things are just sitting there, but whether it weighs 40 tons or not, you can just walk over there and pick it up, you know, all by yourself. So, like I said, I've, I've been reluctant to put this out there, but, uh, 
you know, the pyramids were built exactly the same way. Uh, if you've seen my pyramid video, you know that there was uh, other things involved with that. But anyway, this is how it's done. You can do your research. You can believe it. You can not believe it. Doesn't matter to me. Uh, I find this stuff interesting. Some people don't. So anyway, uh, hope you enjoy the video.